Hey there, Julian here with our second lesson of our Google Tag Manager for Beginners course. And in this lesson, we are going to find out how we can, first of all, set up a Google Tag Manager account and then install it on our website. So let's get started. Our journey here starts at tagmanager.google.com. Now, if you go to this quite fresh and you are not logged into your Google account, it will ask you to either create an account or log in with your account credentials. I trust that you will be able to do so and you will have this interface or if this is your first time actually going in, you will have this section pop up right away. So you create your new account. Now Google Tag Manager has accounts and containers. And as the account name, since you can have multiple containers under this account, you can choose, for example, the company. So just put in your company name. You can choose the country and then you can choose if you wanted to share your data with Google as well. Then we come to the container setup and here you can put in the website name and you could put in the URL, for example, this URL right here or anything else. Now you don't want to have any extra characters in here. Just make sure that it is kept clean and then the target platform, you would choose web. So we'll go and choose web and then we need to accept the terms of service and this will create our Google Tag Manager account. Now, the first thing that will pop up is the install Google Tag Manager code. And here's what we need to do next. We need to place this one last code onto our website so we can utilize Google Tag Manager on our website. There are two codes here. One is a code that needs to be placed in the head section. And the second code is in the body section. What does that actually mean? Well, as we looked at our website previously, we can right click on it and go to view page source. And here we can find HTML code. And what we want to end up with is actually our first code here in the head section. And the head section starts here with this head tag. And the second code should be beneath the opening body tag where we can see this if we scroll around a bit right here. So this is the opening body tag itself. So here's where we want to place our Google Tag Manager codes. There are three ways of actually accomplishing that. First of all, you could do it yourself if you know how to edit the code itself. The second one is to use a plugin or an extension. And the third way is to simply ask the person who can install this for you, maybe your developer. So let's go through all of these three options. The first one being editing the code yourself. Now I'm running here on a WordPress website and in order to edit the underlying HTML, I actually need to edit the theme files and I can go into the back end of my website right here. And obviously you need to have access to the website itself. Under the appearance section, I can go to theme file editor and then I can search for the header PHP right here. And here I can find PHP code, but also the head section. So here is where I want to place my code and I'm going to copy this. Let's put it actually here on line 18. And then I want to scroll down and see the opening body tag right here. And here's where I want to place my second code that I have right here. We can add this in here and update this file. Now, what we want to have happened is that we go back here and we right click first of all and go to view page source. We should see our Google Tag Manager code right here as well as beneath the body tag. We have here our Google Tag Manager script as well. So with that installed, we should have Google Tag Manager installed and we can actually check this by going into our preview mode. So in the interface, let's go to preview and add our URL in here. Now it should connect to the website and if Google Tag Manager is installed correctly, we should have a little panel here that says Tag Assistant connected. And we also should see some data coming in here in the other Tag Assistant tab. So we have installed Google Tag Manager correctly on this website and it's now connected and working correctly on our site. But obviously, if you don't want to deal with code or if you don't have access to the code itself, don't know what you're doing, then you might want to check if your CMS or your shop system has something like plugins or extensions that you can use in order to install these kind of codes on your website. Now, this might be individual per CMS that is out there. So Google for instructions for your specific case. In the case of WordPress right here, we have a vast ecosystem of plugins that we can use. So what I'm going to do here is go back into the backend and I'm going to actually, first of all, get rid of our old implementation so we don't duplicate the codes. So we're gonna get rid of this and get rid of this and I update the files. So Google Tag Manager is now deinstalled, so to say. And now we are going to go to the plugin section and add a new plugin. And we can search here for Google Tag Manager. There are different plugins out there that you can use. I usually use the GTM4WP plugin. So I'm going to install this. 
and activate it. And that will give me in the settings a Google Tag Manager option right here where I just need to install the Google Tag Manager ID. So the ID is this thing up here that you can simply mark and copy and we'll put the GTM ID in here. Now we want to have the container code on and we want to just leave this as off and save the changes and see if it actually works. And now the settings are saved, but make sure here sometimes it changes it to off. So we need to have the container code set to on. So that's very important. I'm gonna click here on on. Okay, and now the settings are saved, it's on. Let's go to our website and right click and go to our view page source. And here we have Google Tag Venture stuff going on. Let's look for our container code. So here we go. This is the code that needs to be implemented as well as the body tag should have some information right here as well as the no script tag. So all the tags were placed without going into the code base actually to put this in. We can obviously also test this again in our preview mode. So this will connect again to our demo site and we are all good and connected. So we have Google Tag Manager now installed on our WordPress website. So maybe this is an option for you if you wanted to use a extension or a plugin. The upside here is that obviously you don't need to utilize any kind of code knowledge. The second part is that there is actually more functionality built into this plugin that we will make use of later on as well. But the downside of using a plugin is that it can also slow down your website, especially if you have a lot of those installed on your website. Maybe another Another drawback of this method that it doesn't always work. You need to be aware that these plugins are built on a standard case of WordPress website. So if you have a heavy customized website and you try out the plugin and it doesn't install the code correctly for you, then it might mean that your website doesn't have the right hooks to have the plugin work correctly on your website. And then obviously you would need to change the plugin around which makes things more and more complicated. Then I would probably rather go with the way of placing the code manually on your website. But if you don't have access to your website and if you are actually not the one who is controlling the website or making changes to the website itself, you probably have somebody like a developer that you need to tell to install Google Tag Manager for you. Now it is as easy as giving these two codes over to your developer. You can actually send them the guide as well and send them the codes. But we have done this with hundreds of clients already and we have made a little bit of a document that you can copy over to your Google Drive account, which I've made up here. So it shows the objective, the documentation for the developer, who to ask for support. Obviously you will need to change that part around and then it explains a little bit about this and then also gives the code examples that need to be obviously changed for your case, for your Google Tag Manager code, as well as if you want to put it as a plain text. So this is a document that you can send over to your developer to get this installed correctly. If you wanna download it, we'll have a link down below. So as you can see now, we have Google Tag Manager installed on our website and we are ready to make our first tag deployment with GTM. But that's something we are going to do in the next lesson of this course. If you enjoyed so far, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest videos that come out. Now, my name is Julian. See you in the next lesson.